we doing guys? Welcome back to the Bond for another cocktail spotlight. And this is a big one because we're talking about the daiquiri. And there's a little bit of pressure because I'm always saying that this is one of my favorite cocktails, one of the best cocktails in the world. So I better not mess this one up. But just before we get started, do us a massive favor, hit that like button and the notification bell. Let's try and inject some life back into this channel now that we're making more content than ever. But the views are a little bit down, so help us out hit that like button. Another couple of bits of admin before we get started. I'm gonna slightly tweak this cocktail spotlight. If you've seen the previous ones, I take a well-known recipe of a popular cocktail and compare it to the version that I use that I've tried and tested in 20 odd years behind some of the best cocktail bars in London. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but that last Bloody Mary video tops out at like 20 minutes. And it's a great video, really good recipe. Go and check it out if you haven't seen it already. But to keep these quick and informative, it seems silly to muddy the water with a recipe that I don't even use myself. And you know, it's a bit of a dick move to say, oh, look how great my recipe is compared to this piece of shit. So we're gonna scrap that, just stick to the important stuff. And if there's any common mistakes that I think are made in popular recipes, I'll just verbalize it whilst I'm making my version. And the other thing just before we get started is I wanted to give a shout out to the Freeport app, which I'll stick a link to down below. And essentially it's an app packed with content for young up and coming bartenders. And they very kindly asked me to host an episode of their flagship show called In The Mix. So go and check them out. And whilst you're there, make sure you leave a nice comment on my episode and hopefully they'll get me back. All right, let's get behind the bar then and have a chat about the daiquiri. Okay, of course, we need to discuss the daiquiri's history before we get onto the actual drink. But fortunately, unlike a lot of classic cocktails, it's universally accepted that it was invented by an American engineer called Jennings Cox, who was working in Cuba at the end of the 1800s at a mine just outside the town of Daiquiri. Of course, we know from our history, particularly our nautical history, that that trinity of rum, lime and sugar has been around for much, much longer. But full credit to Mr. Cox for giving it a cool name and defining a recipe. So what is it about the daiquiri then that I love so much and what makes it such a bartender favorite, apart from its obvious deliciousness and its simplicity? Well, I think it's its versatility. You know, you can use it to elevate a low quality rum. You can use it to showcase a good quality rum. The classic style is about as light and refreshing as any drink ever made. But if you want something a bit more robust, you know, if you're having a cigar out on the veranda on a hot summer's night and you don't want to drink neat spirits, I've had some fantastic spirit forward daiquiris using an Anejo rum or you could try an overproof rum. Some people might frown on that, but I think you should experiment. I wouldn't go too high end, but I think there's a daiquiri for every occasion and each occasion will require a different rum. The purists will say you have to use a light Cuban rum, it has to be dry and tart. But not everybody likes that style, some prefer it on the sweeter side. You know, coming from a high end, high volume cocktail bar background, we always try and find recipes that can be recreated quickly and consistently at a very high level that can be adjusted easily if a particular customer requires it. And you know, the daiquiri would famously be used by legendary bartenders like Sasha Petrescu and Dick Bradsall to test the skills out of younger bartenders because it's thought to be hard to balance and hard to get right. And it's now become one of those drinks that bartenders will use to shit test other bartenders when they go into their bars. But I don't think it should be an intimidating drink. I think if you follow a few simple guidelines, you're gonna get it right majority of the time. Now I've made the daiquiri a few times on this channel, but I've never really gone into the specifics of each ingredient. And there are only three, it's just rum, lime and sugar. And you'd have thought, just put the three together and you've got yourself a daiquiri. Well, it's not quite as simple as that. And you do need to give consideration to each individual ingredient to get the perfect result. So let's start with our first ingredient then which is of course a simple syrup and although it is incredibly simple to make a lot of people make it in different ways so that can cause a bit of confusion what i've always done or what i always stick by to make my daiquiris consistent and really well balanced is one to one simple syrup so that's one part cold filtered water to one part caster sugar not granulated sugar not brown sugar not powdered sugar caster sugar and that's one to one by volume not by weight water is denser than sugar so if you do it by weight you're going to end up with a higher volume of sugar and a sweeter syrup which we don't want and i'll tell you why when we get to the next ingredient we also use cold filtered water and stir it down rather than simmer it on the pan to dissolve the sugar because you don't get any of the inconsistencies that you might get through evaporation and using cold filtered water it just makes it last longer. It gives it a longer shelf life and just makes for a cleaner, more consistent product. So literally all you do is take two vessels of exactly the same size, fill one with cold filtered water, <laughs> fill one with caster sugar, pour them into a larger container and stir it down until you get a clear liquid. That's simple syrup, one to one, ready to go. So let's measure this out then. We're gonna go 15 mils. 
You can go 20, but we're gonna go 15. Remember I said you can use a daiquiri to elevate a lower quality rum, or you can use it to showcase a good quality rum. In this case, we're gonna showcase a good quality rums. So we wanna use a bit of a smaller amount of the sugar and lime mix so the rum can really shine through. All right, next up, of course, is our lime juice, and there's a few important considerations. First of all is its freshness. Hopefully it goes without saying that we're using nice fresh green limes and not manky brown ones found down the bottom of the bowl. But the other thing to consider is how long ago did you make the juice? Now I've always said fresh is best and I've never had any problems using juice straight out of the fruit, but there has been a lot of interesting studies recently where they've taken lime juice and let it mellow for a few hours. And I think they found the sweet spot was between four and 10 hours. So if you're prepping a load of lime juice for a busy bar shift, you need to consider, is it gonna fall within that window? You know, if you're juicing limes at nine o'clock in the morning and someone's still using that juice at midnight, you know, you might have missed the boat. So make sure your juice is nice and fresh. Then how do you juice it? My preferred way, and I'm not even sure what the type of machine is called, but the brand is called a Santos, and it's called a Santos Classic. And for me, that extracts most of the juice without incorporating any of the bitterness from the skin. Now that's not to say I'm not a fan of these Mexican elbows, I use them a lot, but you do need to consider that when you're squeezing that lime or lemon, you are gonna extract some of the oils from the skin. Some people like that, some people seek that out. Some people might not even notice it. And it is subtle, but it's not negligible, so you just need to be aware of that. All right, let's go with 15 mils of lime juice. And going back to the simple syrup, the reason we make it like that is that equal parts of one-to-one -one by volume simple syrup and lime juice, obviously if you don't have any rogue, super sour, super sweet limes, these guys are gonna balance in equal parts 99% of the time. So that's why we do it like that. All right, onto the rum then. And as I said earlier, I'm totally fine with you using whatever rum you wanna use for that particular occasion or purpose. I don't think there's any rum off limits except maybe like the top, top premium stuff. Purists will say that you have to use a light white Cuban rum. And to be fair, my go-to would be like a Havana 3 or a Havana Blanca or even a Bacardi Carta Blanca, even though I know that's not made in Cuba anymore. But I've had some fantastic daiquiris made with like a Havana Club Anejo Especial or a Bacardi 8. One of my favorites was actually Appleton Extra, which is a aged Jamaican rum, but it makes a beautiful daiquiri. But on this occasion and in this day and age, I think it's important we support local. So I'm gonna use Scratch British rum, which is distilled just north of London in Hertfordshire. And it's a really lovely rum with really complex sort of vanilla and cinnamon and other botanical notes. And that's the other reason why I just use 15 mils of sugar and a lime so we can really showcase this rum and get all the flavors. So we're gonna go 50 mils of that. All right, so the last major component of a good daiquiri is what ice to use or what ice to shake with. There is a trend where people like to shake with a big scoop of crushed ice. Some people like to shake with a block ice and some cracked ice. These are to both get extra aeration and dilution. And if you get good results with either of those methods, then I highly encourage you to carry on. I prefer to have a bit more control over the dilution and the temperature, so I stick with my cubes. I've used 26 gram Hoshizaki cubes for as long as I can remember, and I get a very consistent, very pleasing result when I use those. If you want extra aeration and dilution, just shake for longer and harder, and you also get a colder drink without over diluting it as you would with the other types of ice. So let's shake this one up. Without sounding like a complete <laughs> when you've been making these for a really, really long time, you can kind of tell from the sound of the ice if you use the same ice consistently when the drink's nearly ready and you get this frosting on the outside of the tin. So that for me is done. We will of course strain this into a frozen coop. Here's the other big bone of contention with a daiquiri to double strain or not to double strain. I can see the merits of both. I've got a double spring on my Hawthorne strainer, so I think that's gonna do the job. I don't need to double strain. And again, it's all about personal preference. If you like the little ice shards and the mouthfeel of that in your daiquiri, then leave them in. If you don't, strain them out. <laughs> all right, we've nearly come to the end. Just need to garnish it. I'm a child of the 80s. I love the lime wheel. They look fantastic, but they're completely useless. So we're gonna go with the lime wedge. If you want it more tart, you can just squeeze that in. And that is my natural daiquiri. Who thought it could be so complicated? All right, I'm gonna get stuck in and just try this straight away. Oh my goodness. 
This is dangerous. It's only three o'clock in the afternoon. I need to pick the kids up from school in a minute. <laughs> oh, very hard to explain how the lime and the simple syrup just, just go together so beautifully. It's perfectly balanced. If you do want it a bit tartar, just squeeze that in. That's why we use a wedge, not a wheel. And God forbid, don't use a, a dehydrated lime wheel. That is like, it's just even more useless. Why would you garnish a drink with something that looks like it's been left under the fridge for six months? Whoopsie, it's nearly all gone. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Cheers. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Let us know how you got on with that daiquiri. And if you've got any of your own tips or pointers or your favorite twists on the daiquiri, tell us what that is down in the comments. I uh, really want to do another subscriber cocktail video, but we're a little bit short on entry. So come on, guys, get your cocktails down in the comments. Or if you want to take a picture of it, stick it on Instagram, follow us at Bonville Cocktails and use the hashtag Bon Cocktails and we'll be sure to see it. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you next time. All right, we've nearly come to the end. If I could find a knife. We're a bit short on... All right, guys, hope you... All right, guys. All right, guys. All right, guys. Get your cocktails down in the comments, guys. Come on. Come on. What are you waiting for? All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Pew, pew, pew. pew, pew. I'm going to slightly tweak this spock spock towel. I'm going to slightly, I'm going to slightly, I'm going to, but not everybody likes that style. Some people prefer fafafa. All right, guys. Oh, saw buttocks. All good. They're all good. They're all good, right? <laughs>